You're listening to the Greek's Gridiron, live with Ethan Haristadoulou. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Greek's Gridiron. I am Ethan Hersedulu. It is Thursday, January 6th, 2021, and I'm coming at you guys with what we do every single Thursday, and that is our NFL Picks video for week number 18 of the NFL season, the final week of the regular season before we get into the real fun stuff, playoff time. So, Make sure if you enjoy what we're doing here, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button so you do not miss out on everything that I got coming your guys' way as we roll through into the not only postseason, but also the offseason as well. The show is running the entire year. We'll be talking about stuff, news, you know, rumors and whatnot as we go through the duration of the offseason. So and make sure you are around for all that good content. Now, let's get into making our final picks of the 2021 NFL season. So As you see up at the top of the screen here, I am currently sitting at a record of 154 and 100 for my predictions. If you guys watched the video last week, I said to you all, my goal was to be able to hit 150 before we hit 100 incorrect predictions, and I was actually able to do so. My 100th prediction did not come until Monday Night Football, where for some reason I picked the Browns over the Steelers, and in hindsight, I don't really know why I did, because they looked about as bad as I kind of expected them to, but I thought for some reason Pittsburgh might look worse, but you know, in Heinz Field with Ben Roethlisberger leaving, I ate my own words on that one, so it is what it is. My hope now for this final week, if we can crack 160 in like 162, 163, let's see how it goes. So game number one, we're looking at Kansas City Chiefs at the Denver Broncos. So this is in Mile High, Denver, Colorado, the elevated um, area, one of the weirder places for teams to play because thinner air, ball travels further, things like that. It affects players differently. Obviously, the away teams <clears throat> tend to have a few more oxygen cha- oxygen tanks Excuse me, at the ready for them. Now, let's talk about this. First of all, if you have not been watching recently, last week I kind of tried my hand at some of the betting odds, giving you guys my opinions and stuff like that, and I'm going to continue to do so. Remember, I am not no betting expert. Do not take my word for anything I'm saying. I'm just giving you my guys' opinions on how likely I think over and unders are and things like that. Do not take my advice as betting advice, but I am giving my thoughts on them. Now, when you look at the lines for this one here, Chiefs are a minus 10 favorite. That is definitely something I could see as a realistic possibility, just considering how well the offense has played over there in Kansas City as of late. However, if you just watch what the Bengals did to them just this past week, there was a little bit of an exposure going on. I, I want to say that, you know, Kansas City has been really good on defense, especially the last few weeks, uh, or not even last few weeks, like the second half of the season, really, during that eight, their eight or nine win streak that they had going on there until they ran into the Bengals. They were looking really good for a really long time on both the offense and the defense. Um, do I think minus 10 is possible? Definitely. Do I see the fact that the game is in Denver? Maybe the Broncos being a little bit sneaky and keeping the game closer than that. Definitely a possibility. Like I said, in mile high, that tends to affect away teams a little bit more and it makes it, you know, harder to breathe, things like that. And for those of you that don't really buy that sort of thing, if you've ever been somewhere in elevated air, it is not as easy to breathe, especially doing physical activity. And the only people acclimated to that are typically the Denver Broncos because of where they play. Um, Do I think it's going to be a massive factor? No, but will it play some sort of a factor in the game? Sure. As for when you kind of break down the numbers and things like that, uh, Kansas City, their tops in, you know, total yardage, points scored, passing yardage, rushing. They're right in the middle of the pack at 16. Um, Denver has been fairly solid at preventing teams from putting points on the board. It is of needs to be noted that they've only allowed about 18 and a half points a game. They're sitting at third with that number there, and they're actually only seventh in the league in passing yards. So if they're able to bottle up that passing game a little bit, force the Chiefs to run some more, I could see this game being a little bit closer. However, I think I'm going to go Kansas City with the W here. As for minus 10, I I don't know if I can buy that or not because if Denver can slow them down a bit through the air, I think the game could be closer. I don't want to say you're a yes or a no on that one, but mm, in Denver, I might even say no. I could see this game coming down to about seven points. I could. It could obviously hit that minus 10 mark, but I could see it coming down to about seven points or so, but I do take Kansas City. Next up, we got Dallas taking on Philadelphia in one of the more rabid stadiums of the league in Philly. Should be an interesting game. 
t- predicted to be a little bit colder. It's going to be about 28 degrees, so a little bit below freezing. Remember, Dallas is a southern indoor team, so not as acclimated to the weather and colder temperatures as a team like the Philadelphia Eagles would be. Um, this is a pretty interesting game for Dallas because they are currently sitting at 5-0 and for their division this season. If they get this win here, it is a clean sweep of the NFC East for Dallas, and they are sitting at a fat 12-5 and as the division winners. Uh, I think they're trying to fight for our, like a third seed right now. I don't know if they're in the running for the second one. I think if whoever has the second seed right now loses, they might have a shot at it. I don't, I don't know the tiebreakers and everything like that, but I know they're jockeying for some sort of position there depending on where things shake out and who loses and who wins this week. So this is an important game for the Cowboys. As for the Eagles, um, I guess somewhat important because I think a 10-7 and 7 team as opposed to a 9-8 and 8 team in the playoffs will make a difference in seeding. It might be the difference between like a 7th and a 6th seed, which isn't a massive difference per se unless you somehow wind up playing the 7th seed. But realistically speaking, I think the Cowboys do have a little bit more on the line because it'll give them a a higher opportunity to potentially have another extra home game depending on who they play when whoever wins goes through the playoffs there um the the big thing it's probably got to be the turnover margin here and something to keep an eye on. The Cowboys plus 13 with their turnovers. They're one of the better teams at forcing turnovers this year. Um, but another thing I would like to point out here has got to be the points allowed. Both of these teams, I don't expect this to be a super high scoring affair because both defenses have been fairly solid in preventing teams from getting into the end zone. They're both sitting in the top five. So I don't expect this to be a massive high scoring game. Um, the over and under on this one here, I want to take a quick look, is sitting at 43 that's definitely something I could see as possible but I could see this one going just slightly over if this is like a slug fest maybe 17 to 20 obviously you're not going to cross that 43 th- uh cross that 43 th- threshold oh my goodness that was a tongue twister but I do think that hitting over the 43 is possible just because both of these teams have been able to put up some pretty high numbers scoring wise Eagles are ranked 12th at 26.1. Meanwhile, the Cowboys are the leader in points per game at 29.9. So hitting the over on this one is definitely something that's possible. And I think more likely than anything, uh, barring some unforeseen defensive standoff before these two teams. But when you look at the defensive rankings, Cowboys 15th in rushing yards allowed, which bodes well for a rushing attack that is first in the league for the Eagles. So expect them to stay on the ground and try to be effective there. Meanwhile, a team that hasn't been great at passing with the Eagles has an opportunity to take advantage of that 24th ranked pass defense in yards per game of the Cowboys. So I could definitely see this pushing that over. As for a victor in this one here, I picked the Cowboys to win at home last week, and they kind of crushed me there by taking a loss to the Cardinals in a game I did not expect them to lose. And I don't think a lot of people picked the Cardinals to win that one. But I think I'm going to stick with the Cowboys this week. I do like them. They're 5-0 in the division. They've already beaten the Eagles once, and I think that they're vying for that clean sweep of the NFC East. The Eagles are standing in their way at home, but I do think that the Cowboys get the job done. Next up, we are looking at the New Orleans Saints taking on the Atlanta Falcons. We have ourselves an NFC South, and if you didn't realize, every single game this week is going to be a divisional matchup. A matchup in the NFC South here. Both of these teams, uh, well, actually, no, not both of these teams. The Saints are actually fighting for a playoff spot, believe it or not. If they win and the Eagles lose, I'm pretty sure they're in. So with that in mind, the Atlanta Falcons knocked out of the playoffs, not really anything to play for. And on top of that, they are ranked in the bottom in a lot of categories, whether it's offense or defense. They're sitting somewhere around like 26th, 27th, you know, 30th. You name it, they're probably somewhere within the, the like mid to high 20s or, I mean, Passing yardage allowed and forced is sitting right above the top 20 there. Atlanta has not really done a ton great this year. There's not too many bright spots going on. You obviously have Kyle Pitts doing his thing. First tight end since Mike Ditka as a rookie to get 1,000 yards. Only the second tight end to do so. Uh, Meanwhile, when you look at a team like the New Orleans Saints, very aggressive on defense, a very physical defense at that. They're fourth in rushing yards allowed, fourth in points allowed this season, and eighth in total yardage altogether. I don't really think the Atlanta Falcons threaten them too much offensively. I do think the Saints can get a win here despite the fact that it is in Atlanta and with playoff hopes on the line. I think the Saints are going to come in hot. Uh, Taysom Hill had a, a better game this past week, I guess you could say. Um, so, I mean, there are signs pointing in the direction of the Saints probably having a solid game, being able to put up maybe a little bit more against a fairly soft Atlanta defense that has not played too well for the duration of this year. I am going to go with the New Orleans Saints here. I do want to take a quick look at the betting line here to find this game. 
And if we're looking at the numbers here, we have ourselves a minus four and a half for the New Orleans Saints with an over under of 40. That is definitely something that I could see the under hitting at with both of these teams kind of struggling to put points up on the board here. The Falcons are sitting at 18.3 a game. Meanwhile, the Saints are sitting at about 20.9. I could see Atlanta really struggling to get points on the board because of how just how stingy and aggressive of a defense they're playing in New Orleans. And on top of that, New Orleans has not really been putting up as many points as they were earlier in the season, which helped kind of drive this number up that they have here at 20th or 19th in the league, excuse me. So I do think that I'm comfortable with the Saints taking the win here. I would see the under probably seems more likely in my opinion at under 40 and then the minus four and a half. I definitely expect the game to be a little bit closer um, somewhere within that four or five point range maybe, but I don't, I don't know if it comes down to like three or something like that. I feel like maybe a touchdown or so seems more likely. I mean, that's a wash for me. I don't really have too much of an opinion on that one. I would say maybe the minus four and a half. I don't know. That, that's that's an iffy one for me because I could see the I could see the scoreline being anywhere as close as like three points, but also maybe like a ten point spread if you know someone's kicker hits a field goal or misses a field goal for the other team. But I do take the Saints. Next up. We are looking at a storied rivalry continued here as the Steelers take on the Baltimore Ravens in a tough matchup in Baltimore with playoff hopes on the line for both of these teams. Yes, both of the teams. Everyone except for the Browns are in the running still for the playoffs in the AFC. Obviously, the Bengals being the North champions. Meanwhile, Pittsburgh and Baltimore are vying for a spot. Either of these teams getting a win here does not solidify them an opportunity at the playoffs, but it does increase their chances depending on how things play out. Um, the Ravens ha- are battle tested. They have dealt with a lot of injuries this year. Uh, the Steelers feel more like if they win, it's a feel good story. There's a possibility for some rain. So things could get a little bit messy. I, I actually want to give the advantage here to the Steelers, despite the fact that it is in Baltimore and how competitive the Ravens have been throughout this season, despite all the injuries that they have, I think in poor, poorer conditions, um, this is something that Pittsburgh could probably take advantage of because while I love the story that the you know the Ravens have going on here with a backup quarterback leading them to some wins and fighting tooth and nail to keep a playoff spot here, I don't know if Lamar Jackson's going to end up playing in this game or not. I'm also predicting these games on a Wednesday night, which is well in advance of the games on Sunday. So I don't know if Lamar is going to play or not. And if it's not going to be Lamar Jackson, I really don't think that helps their chances for the playoffs, especially in a rainy game if things get messy. While the Ravens are a ground and pound team, Najee Harris has been very effective for them this year, and I really like what he's been doing. I think that they could take advantage of that. And, you know, the Pittsburgh Steelers defense riding high, taking advantage of a struggling Cleveland Brown last week. Uh, You know, TJ Watt wants that sack record. I'm sure you could expect him to, you know, give it an extra 20, 30 percent. You know, he's going 130, 140 percent trying to get after the quarterback a couple of times to break that sack record. It just feels like. You know, despite the fact, wow, this is actually surprising here. The Steelers aren't even the favorite going into this game. The Ravens are minus five and a half. I wonder if that means Lamar Jackson is going to play here. I don't see, he's still questionable. So as of right now, it's not even known whether he's going to play or not. Um, Oh, they got Ben Roethlisberger on there as questionable as well. Well, I would assume he's playing. It's potentially his last game of his career, whether he wins or loses, depending on how things shake out. I think it's probably going to end up not being Lamar Jackson. Um, I, I, unless there's signs pointing somewhere, I've seen some pretty negative things about just how he's doing injury wise with his recovery, not looking too great just as of last week. So I think maybe he ends up not playing as well, um, or playing at all. If he doesn't get to play, um, in light rain, I do like the Steelers. I just think that the Steelers have like a a weird momentum shift and they're riding a little bit of a high right now with the potential of this being the end of Pittsburgh. And I think Pittsburgh as an entire team is really just trying to give him a nice send off at minus five and a half for the Ravens and Steelers sent at plus five and a half. You know, the over under sitting at 41 and a half. I could see this game being a little bit lower scoring just just because of the defensive bout that I might. I think that this might turn into with both of these offenses struggling here. I don't know if I would take the Ravens at minus five and a half and minus uh, 230 for the uh, money line there. I kind of like the Steelers as the underdogs going into this one here. I could definitely see something like that happening. I-, I feel like the Steelers could pull an upset on this one here. It definitely seems like something that is likely and it would be a nice little storybook ending for Ben Roethlisberger to win this game and whether they make the playoffs or not, if he doesn't ride off into the sunset, winning his last game in Baltimore. I kind of like that idea and I think I'm going to pick the Steelers going into this one. 
Next up, we have ourselves the New York Jets taking on the Buffalo Bills. This one is going to be in Buffalo as well. Uh, a game that the Buffalo Bills need to win, basically to win the N- uh, no, excuse me, at the NFC, the AFC East. Definitely got to get the W here with the Patriots sitting right behind them at 10-6 and 6 as well, because if the Patriots wa- lock up things with the Miami Dolphins, that's obviously going to set the Bills back here in their playoffs position. Um, realistically speaking, the Jets would be just trying to play spoiler here, and I do not want to count them out because they took a loss, or not took a loss, but forced a loss for the Bengals and forced a loss for the Titans, the number three and number one seeds in the AFC. FC right now. So do not count the Jets out. I will say that, you know, to, to keep of note here, Zach Wilson has had a solid stretch stretch the last five weeks or so. Aside from one game, four or five games, his QB rating has been above 80. So he has had a, a, a fairly positive stretch of games while maybe not putting up a ton of numbers. He has scored a couple of touchdowns, threw a couple of touchdowns, turned his turnovers down to a very minimum played a little bit better for the New York Jets here as where you look at the Bills um, they're playing solid football right now but they have had a couple of head scratching losses this year you know obviously very far in the rearview mirror at this point but the opening season loss to the Steelers they played really poorly on offense then you look at that six to nine loss that they had to the Jacksonville Jaguars um, and then also they got like that shellacking from both the Patriots and the Colts so you know this is this is a game where it almost feels like maybe the Bills overlooked the Jets a little bit here and maybe let things get out of hand. The Jets just took it to the Buccaneers just last week and lost basically because Tom Brady did what Tom Brady does and stormed a comeback late in the fourth quarter. Uh, I could see Jets playing spoiler here, but I do think that I would go with picking the Bills as the winner in this game. I just have a hard time believing that the Jets could actually get it done at this point with the Bills having so much riding on the line. I think the Bills are going to come out. They're at home. They're going to be ready to roll. There's a possible drizzle or a little bit of rain here. The one thing I will know and not be ignorant to is the fact that the Bills have struggled in interesting weather. So that is something to keep in note. I mean, they had a really ugly game against the Falcons just last week in the snow. Uh, obviously, the rain's a little bit different, but still, you know, slick, slippery, not necessarily dry conditions there. Should be something to keep an eye on. Is, is this Bills team just not built to play in poor weather? And if that's the case, you're in Buffalo. Like, you guys do not cannot be expecting good weather at this point point in the season so you know we'll have to see how things shake out for Buffalo but I do like them as the winner they're like what is this 92.3 percent favorites according to ESPN's power index there I mean I definitely buy that they're minus 16 favorites I don't buy that it's a divisional game the Jets have played spoilers I do not like that minus 16 um, I would take them as mu- as the money line winners but like overall the f- over under is 41 here The Jets put up, what, 29 last week, and the Falcons had 15 on that defense. So, I mean, that does amount to over 40. Obviously, that doesn't matter, though. It's two different teams. The Jets have put up random high-scoring numbers this year, and again, they've beaten some really good teams. I do expect the Bills to win. I could see the over being hit if the Bills have a really, really good game. If they have a really, really good game, I could see them still hitting the over regardless of what the Jets do just because... They're minus 16 favorites, and the Bills realistically could drop like 35 points on their own, and maybe the Jets get a couple of scores, one being late in, you know, whenever there's, you know, five minutes left on the clock, and the Bills are just sitting back, letting their DBs hang 15 yards off the receivers. So I do see this as a possible game where the Bills get a really big win. Um, Just I don't know if I like them at plus 16. I could see this being like a – I could see this being something along the lines of like 24 to 32 or something like that, where the Jets hang in there and maybe almost play spoiler or even play spoiler. Who knows? Next up, we're looking at the Cincinnati Bengals and the Cleveland Browns. This one is in Cleveland here, and I'm going to say right now, with the fact that Baker Mayfield is not going to play, I really like the Cincinnati Bengals going into this game, despite the fact that it is a home game for the Browns. Um, the Browns looked really bad last week, really, really bad. Um, and I was, you know, I was shaking my head the entire game because I picked the Browns to win. And as I was watching the game early on, I was like, why on earth did I even think the Browns could win this game? They played some really poor offense. I think that injury bothered Baker Mayfield more than a lot of people realize and more than he was letting people believe, which is kind of unfortunate because I think he wanted to really just tough through the injury for the team because he felt he gave them the best chance to win. And that is possibly true. But uh, ultimately, this has not been the season that the Browns have wanted. The defense has not played quite as good as, you know, I think that they were expecting to 16th and rushing yards allowed 17th and points per game allowed. Uh, and the offense obviously not being nearly as good as they were hoping for 26 and passing 20 
20th in points scored. Um, the rushing game, obviously strong with Kareem Hunt and uh, Nick Chubb. They've dealt with some injuries there, though, but they still are fourth best in the league. Whereas Cincinnati is a team that has struggled with allowing teams putting up a ton of yards on them and points per game. They're sitting at 22, about 22 a game, so 17th in the league. Um, the defense has been a little bit shaky for the the secondary and honestly more so, more so the interior. I've seen some of the line the coverage line like the linebackers in coverage, excuse me, with Cincinnati struggle a bit. Logan Wilson allowed 190 yards receiving just um, that game against the Jets that they lost. So I mean, there is a little bit of an issue in terms of coverage with what Cincinnati's doing there but their offense has been so efficient and played so well and Jamar Chase is playing like he's a seven-year vet in his prime I mean I like Cincinnati for the win I do think that they will get the win here in Cleveland as for the betting line here it is plus the Browns are favorites going no they're not the Browns are minus six going into this game Oh, Joe Burrow's not playing. That's right. That's right. Joe Burrow is not playing. I forgot. I read that literally like a few minutes before I... Okay, that makes sense. So it sounds like the Bengals are going to be resting starters in this game because I don't think their playoff spot really changes or gets affected whether they win or lose, um, which is kind of a head scratcher here because their record's currently sitting at 10-6. and six, And if they go 10-7 and seven and the Bills go 11-6, and six, the Bills jump them for the three... Why would they do that? I don't know. I'm going to take the Browns for the victory. Oh, no, because the Brown. Who wins this game? The Bengals. I'm going to take the Bengals. I don't know anything about the money lines then. The, uh, the over under 38, I, I'd take the under. I'd take the under. Backup quarterbacks are playing in this game. A lot of starters are probably going to be missing from Cincinnati. I'd take the under. I'll take the under. Give me the Browns. Give me. Uh. Oh, my God. I don't know. Give me the Browns. They have Case Keenum. Next up, we have ourselves the Packers taking on the Lions. Uh, I've also read that there's a possibility Aaron Rodgers doesn't start the game. It sounds like Aaron Rodgers does want to play the game and get the win here, uh, which I love the competitive nature in him for that. I think that, you know, despite the fact that, you know, you have the, you have the NFC wrapped up, you have the number one seed, you have home field advantage throughout. He wants to put the hurt on a division rival. I totally respect that coming from Aaron Rodgers. I obviously don't really find the Lions to be too much of a threat going into this game here. Um, the what is it? Minus only minus four. Fa- I would. Pff, I'll take that. I, I pff, are you kidding me? Minus four. The over under is forty four and a half. I could see the over for that one because I could see Green Bay putting up like thirty five odd points, and then I could see Detroit hitting like seventeen or something like that. So I could definitely see the over for this one here. The spread's sitting at minus four though. That's interesting. I would have expected the Packers to be bigger favorites than that. Um, but I will say, I do think the Packers get the win here. Not a, not really a close game in my opinion, in any shape or form. I think they, they win, they win handedly. Uh, and I think Aaron Rodgers tries to make one last statement game for why he deserves to win back to back MVPs. Next up, we are looking at the Tennessee Titans going up against the Houston Texans and the Titans have home field advantage throughout on the line in this game. And the big wrinkle in this game here, and I think a really interesting one, is the fact that the Houston Texans have already beaten the Titans this year. So do not sleep on the Texans going into this game. It seems like a lot of people are really leaning on the fact that the Titans should win this one. And it sounds like Derrick Henry is going to be able to practice or this week, or did he practice today? I forget if they said it was Wednesday or Thursday. Whether he practiced today or not, he may get a few reps just to kind of knock off the rust in this Houston Texans game. It'll be interesting to see if that's the case. They're minus 10 favorites. The over-under set in that 43. I would take the over on this one here because I expect the Titans to score a lot and I could see the Texans even scoring a fair amount as well again they did beat the Titans the last time they played um, and you can obviously dive into the reasoning for into why they won or lost whatever it may be injuries blah 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 but the Houston Texans have put up a fair amount of points in some games and a little bit more than I think a lot of people expected in a handful of games at that Uh, they are sitting at um, only 15.9 I thought it was higher than that maybe it's dropped down in recent weeks so I mean if you if you look at kind of just the scoring here 24 and a half points roughly for the Titans, which is 15th in the league. Meanwhile, the Texans are sitting at almost 16 points a game. I do see, I could see them crossing a little bit higher than that because I've seen the Texans put up about, you know, 24, 29 points. I couple, I think at one point they had 31 in a game. I could see the Titans taking a comfortable lead and then the Texans maybe storming back late to get a score or two, not threatening to win the game, but, you know, trying to hang in there as much as possible. They are ranked like 30th or worse in pretty much every offensive statistical category when you look at the numbers here and they're not really too high in anything on defense as well. Meanwhile, the Tennessees are like, 
you know, 24, 24 and a half points a game. They're third in rushing. You know, they, they can put up numbers if they need to. And defensively, they can be fairly good, especially they're second in the league at only 85.9 yards a game. So, I mean, some impressive stuff there to really shut down the ground game. But again, I could see Tennessee getting to a comfortable lead laying back a little bit on defense, Texans score a few points, hit the over, but ultimately I do take the Titans for the win in this one here. Next up, we have what is a, another interesting game here because the Colts need to win this game. They control their destiny for the playoffs. If they lose, they are out. If the other teams behind them catch some wins, so let's talk about this. The Jaguars have not allowed the Colts to win in their stadium since 2014. As a Colts fan, I did not know that that was the actual stat for that, but it had felt like it had been a long time since I'd seen the Colts beat the Jaguars in Jacksonville, and I know for a fact the Jaguars usually beat them once a year. In this hearing this stat line would now make sense. They have not beaten them in Jacksonville since 2014. Um, the Jaguars fans are going to be showing up in droves and clown suits, which will be a very interesting thing to see. I'm curious to see if the camera people are just going to be airing those clown people all over the place in response to the uh, Jaguars keeping Trent Balk. We'll have to see how that whole thing goes because I'm, that's a very interesting little side note for the game. But the Colts are heavy favorites in the game. They're minus 15 and a half and the over under sitting at 44. Uh, I would take the under on this one here. I understand the Colts have been putting up a lot of points. What is the exact number here? I just want to pull up the stat line. If you guys are wondering what I'm doing on the side of my screen here, it's because I'm pulling up all the numbers. I can't I can't possibly remember everything here. Um, they're sitting at 27 and a half points a game, whereas the Jaguars are sitting at 14, a game, like roughly 14 a game. They're worse in the league when scoring. And honestly, I feel like I haven't seen the Jaguars hit 14 points before at all this season. So I'm surprised it's even 14. But um. Uh, I would definitely, I could see the Colts being minus 15, find minus 15 and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Minus 15 and a half definitely makes sense to me uh, over under. I would definitely take the under. I could see the Colts having a little bit of a harder time struggling. I don't know. I just feel like they struggle in Jacksonville, whether it's the humidity or whatnot. I could see them having a tough time. Maybe they get somewhere around 20. Jacksonville puts up their like seven to 10 points in the game. You know, maybe they get 13 and you could hit the under there. But the Colts, I think, do get the victory. Playoffs on the line. They need a win over their division rival. And I think they notched their first win in Jacksonville against the Jaguars since 2014. Next up, we are looking at the Patriots taking on the Miami Dolphins. The Patriots, another one of those weird things. Northeastern team. Obviously, when you think of the Colts, they're more of a northern team. But again, another another northern team type thing that struggles to play down south against the Miami Dolphins, a division rival. Another weird game that we're going to have to keep an eye on as we go into this one. Um, the Colts, not the Colts, excuse me, the Patriots are sitting at a plus 10 turnover margin, whereas Miami's sitting at minus 3. This defense over there in New England has been so aggressive and so good at turning the ball over. And they were an absolute nightmare for the Jaguars last week. I don't know what happened to the Dolphins last week themselves. They seem to really struggle against a, t a Titans team that is, you know, you could argue maybe you don't feel that they're the number one team in the AFC, but their record speaks for itself with the amount of injuries they've dealt with. They have done a really good job of, you know, keeping the ship upright and sailing well into home field advantage, uh, especially with a big win this week if they get it done. Um, I could see Miami struggling. I don't think that this is the same game from the last time that these two teams played at the beginning of the season. Miami is sitting in a really weird spot. Their defense has been solid at best, but also they've been fairly mediocre at worst, depending on who they were playing against. All of their stat lines range somewhere around like 14, 15, 16 on defense there as far as like big statistical categories go. Uh, I think that if the Patriots are able to just make sure that they don't turn the ball over in this game, which Mac Jones has been fairly good at throughout the entirety of the season, not throwing a ton of picks there and the running backs are able to hang on to the football. I do expect the Patriots to get a win here in Miami. Again, they need to get it done. If they win this game and the Bills lose this week, they do have a shot at winning the division for the AFC East. So there is that to keep in mind as well. As for the betting odds, let's take a quick look here. What's unfortunate is this app is not organized the same way as this the way I have this whole episode for you guys organized. So I have to do a little bit of searching here. We are looking at an over under of 40. Over under of 40. I could definitely see the under on that one. Under 40 points. What are the Patriots averaging for points per game here? They're sitting at 27.4. Oh, maybe not. I could see the over because I could see New England dropping. 
you know, they just put 50 on the Jaguars. And I don't want to say that the Dolphins are the equivalent of the Jaguars because that would be terribly wrong of me to say. But I will say this. Bill Belichick was not thrilled the way that last game went. And anytime something like that happens where he gets a shot at vengeance, typically does not go well for the other team. I'll take the over on that one because I could see the Patriots running up the score on the Dolphins if they have the opportunity to. Um, Spreads minus six and a half for the Patriots. Uh, I could see that. I could see the Patriots winning by like 14, potentially, depending on how serious things get. It's not that I don't think the Dolphins can hang with them, but the Dolphins, you know, they had their seven-game winning streak. Don't get me wrong. And initially, that one big win was against the Patriots before when they were running one and seven. But uh, ultimately speaking here, the Patriots are, you know, this is a different team from the beginning of the year. They're really starting to figure things out, especially on defense. I really like the defense in New England right now. I think they're one of the best defenses in the league. The numbers show it, you know, fourth in passing, first in points allowed, third in total yardage allowed. It's just they seem to allow teams to run on them fairly well, which is something that the Miami Dolphins are not good at doing at all. That's the one weakness the Patriots have. The Dolphins are ranked 31st in the league at 85, what is it, like 86 yards a game. So, Realistically speaking, all signs point to New England. I like them as the favorites. I would take an over 40 because I could see the Patriots running up the score there. Next up, we are looking at the Bears taking on the Vikings, and this one is in Minnesota here. Both of these teams, are the Vikings knocked out of the playoffs? I can't remember. What what is their record? 7-9, yeah, they're knocked out of the playoffs. I couldn't remember if they were knocked out yet or not. Um, So nothing really on the line here other than just like draft position. I will say this, Chicago has turned the ball over a lot. They have a turnover margin sitting at negative 11. Meanwhile, the Vikings, on the other hand, have been fairly good at protecting the ball and forcing some turnovers themselves. They're sitting at plus nine. So that is one thing to keep in mind. Um, The offense in Chicago is really what concerns me here. I don't really think that they can keep up with the Vikings going into this game, especially at home. I think that Minnesota wants to kind of make a a last-ditch claim to, you know, that this entire season wasn't a failure, even though... I had a lot of Vikings fans try to tell me that they were the best team in the NFC North. And if they lose this game, you could argue they were the third best in the entire division. And I had them as second. And I think if they win this game, which I expect them to win this game, they are the second best team in the NFC North, which is what I predicted. This entire NFC North, I predicted correctly if they end up winning this game, which is pretty much how I expected them to shake out. Um, there is the, also the rumors that like the, the head coach might be gone after the season as well. I saw some stuff coming up about that this week. Uh, so that'll be interesting to see. But uh, I don't know if that's going to really have any effect on the game here. Both teams are not really great at third down conversions. They're sitting at, is this defense or is this offense? Excuse me. No, that's on defense. So allowing only about 36 to 37 percent of the time on third down conversions there, which is actually pretty solid. That's not terrible. Um, meanwhile, Uh, When we look at some of these numbers here, let's see. We have Minnesota. They're sitting at 12th for yards a game, 14th at 24.6 points per game. And then the defense, man, Chicago, what is the money line on this? Because, you know, Chicago's defense is no slouch. Don't get me wrong. Their offense has not been great, but they've been no slouch on defense. They're only minus three and a half favorites, the Minnesota Vikings. Over under is 44 and a half. Where'd they get that number from? I would take the under. Because when you look at points per game scored for both of these teams, the Bears are barely sitting at 18 and a half, 26th in the league. You look at Minnesota, 24.6, 14th in the league. That total, what does that even equal? Like 42, 43? What is the over under? 44 and a half. I could not, I don't think that game hits the over. Bears defense has been solid. I could see them slowing Minnesota a little bit. Minnesota's defense hasn't been fantastic. They're allowing about 25 a game. Maybe the Bears get to, oh, ah, no. Ooh. I like the under on that one. I could see the under on that. As for the spread, minus three and a half favorites for the Vikings. I do think the Vikings get the win. I would expect them to get the win in this game, so to say. Uh, minus three and a half seems about right to me. I'd go with that too. Take the Vikings for the W. 
Next up, we're looking at Washington taking on the New York Giants. Uh, Washington just announced this week that they're going to be revealing their new name February 2nd, I believe, is when it's going to be, a little bit before the Super Bowl. So exciting stuff there. Uh, I was seeing some bet. It seems like they bet on everything these days in the sports world, and there's literally betting lines and money lines for what they're going to reveal as. And uh, I saw there were some people saying that there was a website that popped up that takes the, you right to the to the team's web, like actual official website. I forget what the name was that was on there. Was it not the Commanders? It was like the Armada or something like that, or the Admirals. I don't know. One of those was popped up on there, and people were saying that oh, it's taking you to the website. This is the name. This is the name. I don't know what it's going to be. Um, excited to see what it ends up being though, because I'm very curious what they end up going with here. Um, th- I have to go with Washington in this game without even really going through the numbers just because I said this in my state of the franchise video for the New York Giants. They are so bad on offense and I hate watching them on offense. It is like it's the most head scratching, mind numbing, like infuriating thing to watch. Their numbers speak for themselves, 15.7 points a game. Uh, They can barely get the ball moving through the ground or through the air. They don't even average 200 yards passing or 100 yards rushing. They don't really do anything very well. Uh, It's very frustrating watching them on offense. Meanwhile, Washington has had a few games here and there where they've even reached 31 points. I don't know if the Giants have even hit that once this year, but, uh, you know, I don't like the Giants' offense at all. I don't really trust in them to win a game, never mind a game against a division rival like the Washington football team where, yeah, they're not the great in passing D, uh, but they do shut down the run fairly well. I don't I don't like the Giants in this one at all. They are the home team. I'm going to see what the uh, what the money lines are saying. Yeah, they are, it is favored in Washington at minus 7. I totally – and the over-under is 38. I would take the minus 7 Washington and also the over-under sitting at 38. I could see the under. I could see this game ending in like a score line of like 20 to 14 if things aren't really going that well. I could see something like that. But um, yeah, give me Washington, minus seven. I like that. For the Panthers and the Buccaneers, the last time these two teams played did not go well for the Panthers. Uh, I believe the score was like 36 to to nine or something like that, or 32 to nine. I don't know. It was not good for the Carolina Panthers. This is a team that has struggled offensively, um, has not lived up to any sort of hype. uh, And I love the defense that they have over there in Carolina. If you have not watched my State of the Panthers video that just came out yesterday, um, I go into a deep dive on them and talk about them, and I rave about the defense the whole video. So if you're a Panthers fan, check it out. But the offense, though, I mean, their turnover margin is minus 11, and more so because that offense just cannot stop turning the ball over. Um, I definitely take the Buccaneers in this one. I think they're the clear favorites going into this game. The total points scored Tampa Bay sitting at 470 to Carolina's 287. Carolina didn't even cross the 300 uh, threshold this year. I feel like I've watched them put up single digit numbers multiple times this year. Do not like the way that they're playing offensive football at all, but I do love that defense over there in Carolina. As for the, uh, Wow, minus eight. Give me that. That's an easy one. Tampa Bay minus eight over unders 41 and a half. Um, I think based off of I'm going to look up the score just because I want to know exactly what it was. Uh, Give me the scores here. When did these two teams play? I think it was was it week 16 they played each other. I want to say it was week 16. Buccaneers Panthers 32 to six, which puts you at 38 and the over under for this game is 41 and a half. I could see it hitting the under just because the Panthers can't score, realistically speaking. And also, with the loss of Antonio Brown and not no one really knowing what's going on with all that, I could see the Tampa Bay Buccaneers often struggling just a little bit to put up as many points. I would take the under on this one here. I think that the, the, the losses of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers offensively might be starting to mount a little bit, and it might slow the offense a bit. They'll still be effective. They still have a really good run defense. Uh, you know, I, I like what they do over there in Tampa Bay. Uh, defensively and offensively, this game is going to be 80 degrees. I live in the Northeast, and it is not going to be 80 degrees on Sunday here. It is going to be cold, but it's going to be a hot 80 degrees. (laughs) I'm sure it's going to be humid because it's in Florida on the water in Tampa Bay. My goodness, give me the Buccaneers. I do like them for the win in this game. Uh, The minus eight is that's a shoe-in right there. That is a shoe-in. I like that one a lot. Next up, we're looking at the Seahawks and the Arizona Cardinals. Another divisional matchup here. Arizona, 
uh, trying to potentially steal the division from the Rams should the Rams take a loss this week. So some interesting little ripples in that there. Uh, I believe they've split their series one-to-one, but if they win somehow, I think they end up stealing the division. I don't necessarily know the tiebreakers and what leads to that. But let's discuss this a little bit. Or they might have the same record. Maybe that's what it is. And I think whoever has the worst record would obviously take it. But I don't know. What do the Rams have? Arizona's sitting at 11-5. and five. The Rams are right below here. So we can take a quick peek at this. The Rams are sitting at 12-4. and four. So I think if the Rams lose and Arizona wins, Arizona does get the division. And I don't know what the tiebreaker is for that. So please educate me in the comment section down below if you do know. But looking at these here, Arizona, top 10 in a lot of offensive numbers. Meanwhile, Seattle is ranking very low in a lot of defensive categories that the Cardinals are very good at. The passing defense in Arizona is not good. Uh, they let up 20. They did beat the Lions 51 to 29, but that 29 speaks volumes for how much this defense is still struggling considering how well the offense played in that game. If you're letting up 21 points to the Lions, that really concerns me about how much you would let up to the Arizona Cardinals. Um, they're already sitting two and three in the division. I think the Cardinals do get a win here. I just think the mat, like in terms of matchup, Arizona, they're really good at passing the football here. And I think that more so than anything else, the Seahawks are struggling right now. They have a little bit of a surge going on. They've won a few games to, you know, make this season not look as bad as it's been. But I think they fall to six and 11. I like the Arizona Cardinals a lot going into this game. I think their bounce back game against the Cowboys did a lot for this team. Uh, as for the betting odds here, we'll go ahead. We'll take a quick look. The over under is 48. And then Arizona is a minus six and a half favorite. Why do they think it's going to be that? You have two top 10 in points allowed defenses. Like like the Cardinals are allowing 20 and a half points a game. And the Seattle Seahawks are allowing 21 points a game. That I mean... And the over under is 48. Give me the under. What the hell? What is like, what is that? What would be the reason for that? Uh, I guess there, uh, uh, no, there's nobody really like, Hmm. Oh, what is that all about? I, that's gotta be something that Las Vegas knows that I don't know, but, um, I would definitely take the under minus six and a half favorites for Arizona is definitely something I could see just because I could see the defense for Seattle letting up a few more points. Um, but other than that, I do like the Cardinals. I think they get the win at home. Give me minus six and a half over under 48. Next up, we got the 49ers at the LA Rams. Um, this one is in LA playoff stuff on the line here. I believe for the, uh, 49ers, this is a win in your, I got police flying by my house right now. I don't know if that's being picked up on the mic, but, um, this is in SoFi obviously for the Rams. The 49ers, they have to win this game if they want to make their way into the playoffs here. I believe they're still one of the teams fighting for an actual playoff spot, so it's kind of a win in your in scenario. The 49ers have had the Rams number as of late. They've taken them down a handful of times, and I think more often than not, the Rams are usually the favorites going into this game the last few years, and they still take the loss anyways. Um, The Rams are only minus four and a half favorites. The over under sitting at 44 and a half. When you look at the numbers here, I don't know if Jimmy Garoppolo is going to start or not. Is he, is this on the injury report here? Do they have that there? I don't know if Jimmy Garoppolo is going to play or not here. It's not saying anything on the injury report about him. And I feel like a full injury report would, uh, tell me a little bit more about what the quarterbacking situation is going to be like for the San Francisco 49ers, because that is kind of a, where is, a, B, C, D. Where do they put the 49ers on here? Oh, I'm stupid. It's it's labeled by cities. Uh, let's see the injury report here. Do they have anything on Jimmy Garoppolo potentially playing or not? Garoppolo thumb, questionable. Returning to practice. Oh, he returned to practice actually today. And I say today as in Wednesday. Uh, after his throwing session Tuesday went well. So it sounds like Jimmy Garoppolo might play. Hence why the closer score line. So uh, this is an interesting one. Like I said, the 49ers have had the Rams number and I was not aware of that going on up until it was brought up. Um, geez. It's in LA. The Rams need this game to win their division. I know that I'm going to hate myself for making this pick. 
Kyle Shanahan has played them really, really well. But I think I'm going to go with the Rams anyways. I like the Rams going into this game. I trust their defense more. I trust their offense more. Jimmy Garoppolo has his games, but he also has some pretty bad games. Trey Lance played fairly well last week. If he ends up playing or having to come in, I don't know how he's going to fare against a Rams defense that has played pretty well this year. Maybe not quite the defense they were last year, but still fairly well. Give me give me the Rams. Uh, that's I think it was minus six and a half, we said. Minus four and a half. I like that. I think the Rams get a close win. Minus four and a half. I'll take that. Over and under at 44 and a half. I could see the over on that one there, just because I think there's a lot of offensive potential going into this game here. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I like 44 and a half for the over. Give me the Rams. Give me 44 and a half plus. Last up on the list is a Sunday night football game. Both these teams could realistically take a knee and make the playoffs. Um, so there, that is an interesting little ripple. I obviously don't think that's going to happen. A lot of people would be pretty pissed off if that was going to be the case, if the way that game was going to end was like that. Um, we have the Chargers at minus three favorites. Over-unders at 49.5, and, and I totally understand why, because both of these defenses are a little bit suspect. Uh, when you look at rushing yards allowed, the Chargers have allowed 136.7 per game. Um, and then when you look at total yardage allowed, the Chargers do allow a ton of yards. Meanwhile, Vegas is really good at moving the football and pulling in a ton of yards. As for scoring, you have a top 20 team with Las Vegas at 21, and the Chargers are sitting at 26 and a half, roughly, give or take. That's not an exact number. Um... I do think that this will probably be more of an offensive scoring type of game. I, neither of these teams boast like shutdown type of defenses. I think that the the Raiders passing defense is, is a little bit more impressive than anything. Um, if I was to pick something from Las Vegas and the Chargers passing defense is pretty solid themselves. They're both top 15 teams in passing. But I will say the one thing that does concern me for the Raiders is their turnovers. They are they are sitting at a margin of minus 11. Meanwhile, the Chargers are sitting at they're only at plus one. So they're like they're right down the middle with turning the ball over and forcing turnovers. Meanwhile, I, there have been a, ha- a handful more turnovers um, committed by the Raiders going into this one here. So I think protecting the ball is going to be key for them to coming out with a victory here. They are at home. So I could see the Las Vegas Raider faithful coming out in droves to root their team on and maybe carrying their team into a victory here in this one. And I'm going to go with the Raiders. I feel like I've, I, they've been a tough team to predict. They've gone through a lot this year, but they are somehow nine and seven fighting for a playoff spot right now with all the adversity that they've dealt with. I think they get the win. I think Rich Visakia uh, is going to lead this team to a big victory an upset victory. I know that the chargers are minus three, I like the Raiders at plus three. I think they get the job done. I don't know about that over. Um, over underline, 49 and a half. That is high. That is high, but it's possible. I I don't know. Cause I could see this I could see this game going both ways. I don't know if both these teams put up something like 25 or more points. 27, 24, though. I could see something like that. Give me the over. I like the over in this one. I like the over. I like the Raiders for the upset. It's my final NFL picks of the regular season, and then we get into playoff time. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. I appreciate you all for watching. Again, make sure you hit that like and sub button. I'll see you guys uh, probably Friday, Saturday with another video. We're doing state of the franchise stuff all week, going over some of the the, the lesser teams of the league, so make sure you're looking out for those. Uh, I got Jets in the tank. I got Bears in the tank, and there's a couple other teams I want to focus on as well, so make sure you keep an eye out for those. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday, everybody. I will catch you all next time in another video. Have a good one.